Hey guys, welcome back to Fancy Tips. My name is Julian, and this is the weekend video for week 22 of the season. This is the video where I suggest players that you should consider adding to help you secure that win this week, week 22 of the season. Now, this could actually be the very last week of the season for you. Some people have their playoffs starting in week 23. So for those teams that are desperate to secure that win in week 22, to secure a playoff berth, this video is for you guys. Please keep in mind guys that I recorded this video in advance, a little more in advance than I usually do because I won't be able to record this when I normally have to record this video. So if I do mention a player who's injured, obviously don't pick up an injured player, but I assure you the players in this video are excellent pickups to help you save your week. Before we get started, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. More than half you guys that watch the channel are not subscribed, so be sure to hit that. Would really appreciate it a lot. And without further ado, guys, let's jump right into the content for today and let's take a look at the schedule for this weekend. So as you can see here, guys, there are 10 teams that play on Friday, 24 that play on Saturday, and 16 that play on Sunday. So go ahead and check your lineup and see where you have room to add a player that would actually fit in your lineup. If your lineup is full on Saturday like it likely is, don't be adding a player that's going to play on Saturday because it doesn't make any sense. You're just going to end up sitting somebody that you already have in your lineup. So do make sure to check your lineup and make sure to see if there are room on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Now, if you do have room both Friday and Saturday, there are three teams that play both of those days, Calgary, Columbus, and Washington. So if you do want to grab a player to stream for both those days, the number one guy I'd consider is Oliver Bjorkstrand of the Columbus Blue Jackets, playing on their top power play and second line. And he's been pretty solid all year, and he's been pretty hot lately. So definitely not a bad streamer for those two days. Then I have Blake Coleman of the Calgary Flames. And yes, he was a drop in my most recent drop video, but if you are desperate for someone who plays both those days, there aren't that many amazing options, and Coleman might be the best option for you. He does get to play second line minutes, gets a decent amount of shots and hits, and therefore gives you a little bit of a floor. And then I have Jacob Voracek, and he plays in Columbus's top power play, and he's a pretty consistent player, will probably get you an assist in both the games he plays Friday and Saturday. And then I have Jack Roslevic, who's playing on the top line with Patrick Liney, and the top power play play with Lionel and Voracek and Bjorkstrand, and that's a pretty solid place to be. Because Boone Jenner is injured, Rostovic is getting a really solid opportunity, and therefore makes for a decent streamer. And then I have Anthony Mantha of the Washington Capitals, and he's someone who, you know, hasn't been playing as great as I would have hoped, but he's still someone who's getting a decent deployment on Washington on their second line, and therefore is someone that could potentially put up a few points for you this weekend. Then I have Sean Corrali, who's playing on the third line in Columbus, but he's been really consistent all year. He's putting up peripherals, he wins some face-offs, and he's been putting up points. Really, really great. Then I have Mikhail Backlund, who plays on a line with Blake Coleman. He's not super consistent for points, but when he does score points, he tends to score them in bursts. So if you're lucky, you'll catch him in one of those. Then I have Gustav Nyquist of the Columbus Blue Jackets, who plays on the top line with Liney and Roslevic. And if he's still on that line, he's definitely worth a pickup because he could potentially put up a few points there. And then I have Garnett Hathaway of the Washington Capitals. And while he does play on the fourth line, he does offer a relatively safe floor with hits and he's someone that you could pick up just for that floor, and he occasionally does score a goal as well. And then I have Connor Sherry, and while he is also only on their third line with Lars Eller, he does tend to shoot the puck a nice, decent amount to give you a little bit of a safe floor, and there are worse options than Connor Sherry. Now, in the very likely event that you actually only have room in your lineup on Friday and on Sunday, you're going to want to add a player from one of these teams. Arizona, Buffalo, Colorado, New York Rangers, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and the Winnipeg Jets. Now, the number one guy that I would consider adding is obviously Clayton Keller. Now, this guy has been fantastic all year. The fact that he's not like 80% owned is absolutely crazy. So if he's available in your league, he's absolutely the number one add for this weekend and definitely hold on to him after this weekend as well. And then I have his line mate, Nick Schmaltz, who's also been great. Also a fantastic ad for the weekend. Then I have Valeri Nichushkin, who is playing on the top line with McKinnon and Rantanen. And because of that, he makes for a solid ad. Next is Cam Atkinson of the Philadelphia Flyers, currently playing on their top line with Derek Brassard 
and with James Van Riemsdyk. That's not a terrible deployment. He's getting top power play time as well, and he's been their most consistent player all season. Then I have Tage Thompson, Alex Tuck, and Jeff Skinner, that top line in Buffalo. And while they've had their ups and downs, they're still very solid ads, and they can definitely put up a whole bunch of points for you if you're lucky in two games. Then I have Andrew Kopp of the Winnipeg Jets playing on a line with Nick Ehlers, which is pretty solid, and he's someone who definitely knows how to put away a few points. So definitely he could put up a couple points for you easily in a couple games. And then I have Derek Brassard, who's top line and top power play in Philadelphia just because of all the injuries there. And because of that, he's got an awesome chance to put up some points. Definitely really like adding Derek Brassard. And then I have Travis Konechny, who's been relatively decent all year. He's a guy who probably puts up a point every couple games or so. And in two games, you could probably expect one point from him. And then I have Lawson Krause of the Arizona Coyotes. And when I'm recording this, he's recently scored a hat trick, and he's someone who's been very consistent all year. He shoots the puck a nice amount. He gets those hits as well. So he does give you a nice floor night in and night out. He does play on their second line. He does have a pretty solid deployment with their top power play as well. Do really like Lawson Kraus for this weekend as well. Then Paul Stasty plays in the top line with Shifley and Wheeler. That's a really solid deployment. Kellogg Posta plays in the second line in Buffalo. Been really consistent all year, like him as well. Travis Boyd, who plays top line with Keller and Schmaltz in Arizona. Always opportunities to put up points playing with those two. Then Alex Newhook, who when I'm recording this, is playing in the top six in Colorado. And if he does keep that spot, definitely worth an ad for the weekend in deep, deep leagues. And then last one is I have Rodriguez and Carter, and they've both been ice cold. But... They could heat up at any point, so if you do want to throw a dart and take a chance on them, it's not the worst idea in the world. Now, if you have room in your lineup on both Saturday and Sunday, the teams that you want to be streaming from are Detroit, Florida, Minnesota, Montreal, New Jersey, the Islanders, Tampa Bay, and Toronto, because those are the teams that play both Saturday and Sunday. The number one guy that I would go after is Michael Bunting of the Toronto Maple Leafs, plays top line with Matthews and Marner. And you know he's been really solid all year. Leads all rookies in scoring. So very, very solid add with Michael Bunting. Then I have Cole Caulfield of Montreal Canadiens. Plays top line with Nick Suzuki. Been really, really good. And definitely a really good add there as well. Then Matt Boldy, who plays on a line with Kevin Fiala and Frederick Goudreau. It's been a really good line. He also gets top power play time. So Boldy, definitely a good add for the weekend. Carter Verhage plays on the top line with Barkov. That's all you need to know. He's been really pretty good all year. It's Scoring some goals, so definitely a good ad for the weekend as well. Nico Hishier is someone who's been excellent as of late and definitely a really, really good weekend ad. Joel Eriksson and Marcus Foligno play on a line together along with Jordan Greenway, and they've both been pretty solid all year. Marcus Foligno does provide a safer floor, and Joel Eriksson has more upside for points, I would say. Then Brock Nelson of the New York Islanders, who's been pretty good all year, probably been their most consistent player, so definitely a good ad there. Then J.G. Pajot, who as of late has been scoring a lot of points, so don't mind the ad there. Jacob Vrana, who's playing on the third line in Detroit, but is managing to put up a good amount of points, and I think he's a pretty solid ad as well. Mason Marchman and Anton Lindell, who play on the third line in Florida. When I'm recording this, Lindell is injured, but there is a good chance that he'll be back, so I have them both listed here. They're both pretty good ads, considering the Panthers are just a really dominant team. Then Anders Lee, and if he's still hot when this video comes out, guys, definitely still worth an ad and streaming him for this weekend. Lucas Raymond of the Detroit Red Wings, who plays on their top line with Dylan Larkin, definitely a good idea to stream Lucas Raymond. Anthony Beauvillier of the New York Islanders, who as of this recording is quite hot. So if he's still hot, guys, really, really, really good ad. And then Josh Anderson, who's really, really, really streaky, but Anderson does get to play on the top line and top power play with Suzuki and Caulfield. Throw a dart and hope that he scores a goal. Then I have Anthony Sorelli of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Plays on line with Stamkos and Killorn. It's a pretty good line, but Sorelli is really... He doesn't put up a lot of peripherals, so if he doesn't put up points, not doing a whole lot for you. He doesn't get a lot of power play time either. Then Pavel Zaka and Dawson Mercer... They have different deployments on the Devils, and if they are still hot when this video is recorded, definitely still worth an ad. Igor Shavrongovich is another Devil that could be worth an ad if he's hot when this video goes out. Before you pick him up, just check if he's gotten points in his most recent games. If he has, definitely someone worth adding for the weekend. Frederick Gaudreau, who I briefly mentioned, plays with Matt Boldy and Kevin Fiala. Definitely someone who's 
and got the deployment to put up points. He usually puts up a point every couple of games or so. So in those two games, he'll probably get you a point, which might be enough for you. And then Mike Hoffman of the Montreal Canadiens plays on their second line. He does get a good amount of power play time, so he's someone that you could definitely consider. And Kyle Palmieri, when I'm recording this, he's insanely hot. So if he stays insanely hot, you can raise him a lot on this list. But if you slow down a little bit, this is where he belongs at number 21. And then I have Corey Perry, who plays on their third line, but has managed to score a point every couple of games or so this year. And if that's what you need, he's not a terrible add. And last but not least, I have Jordan Greenway, who does play on a line with Marcus Foligno and Joel Erickson Eck. And by default, playing on that line, he's bound to score a couple points. And he also likes to lay the body a little bit as well. Moving on to defensemen now, and the number one ad for me is Rad Kogudis, assuming that you are in a hits league. If you're in a league that doesn't count hits, ignore Rad Kogudis. He's completely useless. But if you're in a league that has hits, Rad Kogudis, he's been hitting like a madman, and he offers you a very, very safe floor night in and out. Then I have Jared Spurgeon of the Minnesota Wild. And he's someone who is playing on Minnesota's top power play and therefore has a really good opportunity always to put up some points. Rasmus Anderson is someone who's playing on Calgary's power play. He also has a really good opportunity to put up points. Shane Gossesbury, who plays top power play in Arizona, has been pretty solid all year. Josh Morrissey plays top power play in Winnipeg. You're probably seeing a trend here, guys. Um, and he also gives you a pretty safe floor because he does tend to give you some decent peripherals. Damon Severson of the New Jersey Devils plays top power play in New Jersey. Jeff Petrie, who's recently been promoted to the top power play in Montreal, he's been doing pretty well there as well. Dmitry Orlov of the Washington Capitals plays PP2 there, but puts up some solid peripherals and manages to put up a point every couple of games or so as well. Rasmus Ristolainen, who gives you a safe floor with hits. If you're not in a hitting league, do not consider adding Ristolainen. Ryan Pollock of the New York Islanders, and if the Islanders are still insanely hot, Pollock is still a must add player. Then Brendan Dillon of the Winnipeg Jets. He's a guy who gives you safe floor with his peripherals, shots, blocks, and hits. Won't put up a point very often, but the peripherals give you a pretty safe floor. Then I have Eric Chernak and McDonough of the Tampa Bay Lightning, and both give you decent floors with hits and blocks. Neither of them are my favorite option, though. And then I have Hannafin and Shillington of the Calgary Flames. Both play PP2 in Calgary. Neither of them I love either, but, you know, they'll give you a little bit of a floor. And then Vladislav Gavrikov, who puts up a point every few games or so and does give you a little bit of a floor as well, but I'm not super high on him either. Now, if you're in a categories league and you want to make sure that you win your shots on goal category because you're ahead by a little bit or you're behind by a little bit, the number one guy that you can add to help you do so is Tage Thompson of the Buffalo Sabres. He shoots 3.3 times per game. So if you add him for both the games that he plays this weekend, you'll get somewhere between six and seven shots in all likelihood. And hopefully that'll be enough to help you come out on top of that category. The next best guy to add is Jeff Skinner, who shoots 3.2 times per game. Alex Tuck, 3.1. Eric Sinek, 3.0. Atkinson 3.0, Evan Rodriguez 2.9, Blake Coleman 2.9, and if you need someone who's not very high rostered, Ilya Mikheyev is only 4% rostered and shoots 2.6 times per game. And then if you need blocks, the number one guy to add is Ryan Pollock, who blocks 2.6 times per game. And then the next best guy is not even close to Pollock. It's Lindgren, who blocks only 2.1 times per game. Provorov, 2.1. Peak, 2.1 as well. Dyson Mayo, 2.0. And then Ryan McDonough, 1.9. If you need hits, the number one guy to add, no surprise here, is Radko Gudis of the Florida Panthers. Hits 4.4 times per game. So you're streaming him for two games, you're going to get somewhere between eight and nine hits in all likelihood, which is pretty solid. Then I have Ryan Reeves, who hits 4.2 times per game. Cal Clutterbuck, 3.9. Rasmus Solanen, 3.6. Matt Martin, 3.5. And Marcus Foligno, 3.3, on top of the points upside he has. And then if you need face-off wins, the number one guy to stream is Nico Heashier of the New Jersey Devils. 10.3 face-offs per game, and over two games, you'll win probably somewhere between 20 and 21 face-offs, which is absolutely fantastic. And then if he's healthy, Christian Dvorak wins almost 10 face-offs per game, so also another really excellent streamer for that. JG Peugeot wins 9.7. Joel Eriksson wins 9.0. Michael McLeod of the Devils wins 8.7, and he's only 1% rostered. Jeff Carter, 8.6. Nick Dowd, 8.4. Sean Corrali, 7.8. Michael Backlund, 7.7. David Camp of the Toronto Maple Leafs, only 2% rostered, 7.5. And Barrett Hayton of the Arizona Coyotes, only 1% rostered, wins 7.4 face-offs per game on average. 
And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Once again, I do apologize if I mentioned someone who's injured or who got traded to another team. I am recording this significantly in advance. My apologies, but I, there, I had no way of recording this closer to the date, unfortunately. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. Please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.